So in the city of Canton in Imperial China in the early 19th century, vaccination was willingly adopted. And a key reason for this was that it was promoted by the local gentry. The gentry are either state officials or they're closely linked to the state through their having been conferred a degree in the imperial exam system. But they also have strong ties to society. A system of Confucian norms and the mandate of heaven prompts the local gentry over many centuries to be responsible and accountable for the welfare of people. So they enjoy a long legacy of trust and authority. And the way that the gentry endorses this new Janarian vaccine was by embedding it within traditional established ways of thinking about and treating smallpox. One of the ways that the gentry promoted vaccination was by writing prefaces for a vaccination manual written by one of the first vaccinators in southern China, Chiu Shi, who had learned the technique from the Surgeon General of the East India Company, Alexander Pearson. Chiu Shi's manual was technically a translation of a manual written by Pearson, but the translation did a few things to creatively link the vaccine to the principles and practices of Chinese medicine. For one, Chiu Shi got rid of this whole method of inoculation discovered in the Kingdom of England, so he changes the title. He adopts the writing style and the illustrations of traditional Chinese medicine texts. A further sinicization is that he adopts the same pre- and post-operative dietary and ritual protocols that had accompanied variolation. And finally, remember that variolation had happened in Canton through nasal encephalation. You're snorting the scabs up your nose. And now in the vaccine, there is an incision into the arm by a vaccination lancet that is radically new. Now, Chiu Shi and the gentry who are endorsing his manual make this acceptable by linking it to the familiar needling technique of acupuncture. Vaccination manuals such as this use ornate illustrations in traditional drawing styles to show vaccinators how to make incisions along acupuncture meridians that corresponded with smallpox. The customary cooling diet was also maintained, and often the Janarian vaccine was accompanied by traditional herbal formulas. In contrast, the vaccine meets with a far cooler reception in 19th century Calcutta. It arrives at exactly the same time in both Canton and Calcutta. It's introduced by the same agent, the East India Company. And these cities are key entrepots in the European, especially the British trading system. In fact, trade between Calcutta and Canton, silver, tea, and eventually opium, is the lifeblood of British imperialism. And you can get a sense of the importance of the two cities from this painting of the three money brothers, all employed by the British East India Company that was commissioned by their father, Mr. Money, where the fingers of Robert and James Money are pointing to Canton and Calcutta, respectively. So Calcutta shares many socioeconomic political similarities with Canton, but unlike in Canton, the vaccine in Calcutta is resisted. An important reason is that British colonial officials do not have the same degree of trust or legitimacy as the gentry, Further, because the colonists spread of vaccination was part of a civilizing mission, this led them to present the vaccine as something totally new and different from the established practice of variolation, especially the worship of Sitala in which variolation was embedded. So variolation, which as I mentioned, was very effective and in fact formed the basis of knowledge on which Jenner built, was now described by the East India Company in Calcutta as backward and is dangerous. And yet, even though the technology of the vaccine was very similar to variolation, much more similar than in Canton, because people were accustomed to having an incision into their skin, yet most residents of Calcutta and the surrounding areas of Bengal avoided vaccination and continued to prefer variolation.